Hello everyone and thank you for stopping by. I wanted to do a video or a 100,000 mile review on my 2017 Nissan Maxima SR. I purchased this car in February of 2017 from Sheridan Nissan in Delaware. They pretty much had this car. It was actually a demo. It had 5,900 miles on it. It was right place, right time. They had a goof up on the pricing with whatever company they were using that was um, setting up the pricing. So I actually got it for like 3,000 less than they really wanted to sell it for because I told them like I want it for the price I saw it for. So I picked this car up for about 29,000 and some change. It had, again, it had 5,900 miles on it. They were using it as a, as a demo. This is the blue with the SR, or not SR, with the, uh, midnight uh kit on it with the black wheels black accent so those are just a couple things about the car at a high level it also came with a service plan where i could go in and get lifetime oil changes so that's actually been a really good thing because i've been able to get full synthetic changes at the dealership pretty much for free uh, so it was kind of like a no-brainer to actually get this car so let's um go on to the outside and do a couple of exterior details and kind of let you know what my experience has been with this car just wanted to mention that uh again i have gotten all of the the maintenance done at the dealership pretty much uh this car throughout the 111 111 000 miles i've only gotten tires oil changes brakes you know things of that nature no major issues with this car whatsoever I was one that was always afraid, probably like many of you that are probably watching this video because you want to know what a high mileage car is like. I've done all of this mileage has been mostly on the highway. I live in Maryland, but work in New Jersey. So it's about a about 120 miles round trip, which I was going about on average three days a week, every week. And then I was still making trips back and forth to Philadelphia because that's where I was from and my family's there. So most of this mileage, is done in uh, on the highway around here where I live at is mostly suburban probably some rural areas so it's a lot of cruising I, I can't say that I've been hard on this car in terms of like stop and go because I really don't have stop and go down here where I live at now so that's pretty much some of the backstory so let's go on to the outside and take a look at some of the things on the outside in case you're considering purchasing this for yourself okay so this is the outside of the car so pretty much um this is the blue with the midnight edition uh kit with the black spoiler the black wheels and all the black accents i did black out all of the chrome I used the uh what was that called plasti dip uh, kind of had to do it I, I think if you do it maybe like six seven coats it lasts maybe two years or so you, you might get two years out of it and then you kind of get some you know some peeling in spots i've tried to repair some areas like this one i need to touch up uh, the door handle you know you can kind of see some of the wear from using my uh finger to open the door and unlock it but anyway uh, let's go into the front so again this car was brand new pretty much it was like pristine this car is subject to a lot of road rash that that's probably not too common or uncommon for cars that are mostly highway driven so there's not a whole lot I can do to get this cleared up I probably have to just get it repainted you know maybe once I'm not working in New Jersey I'll get it repainted and get a new light housing I also upgraded all of the lighting um, all of the halogen lighting on this car to uh, LEDs there's actually two bulbs in each side for the front so you're almost putting the equivalent of like four headlights in these uh, in these housings so I did upgrade the, the bulbs to a 6K halogen bulb from, uh, not halogen, uh, LED bulb from V-LEDs. Um, I think the kits are, or not kit, but the bulbs, the pairs are about, mm, I'm going to say 120, 140 a piece. Uh, definitely worth the money. Um, you'll want to spend that good money on those because if you cheap out on these, you're going to be upset. And it's a pain to try and take these things out if you have to do it often. Again, I did plastic dip the front bumper. It does have a lot of wear. Um, I think this coat right here is about two years old, so I need to strip it and try and fix it up again. Uh, also, you'll notice that here, um, there's a lot of road rash that reaches up here on the on the uh, upper part of the uh, hood. So if you guys are considering getting one of these new and you're going to take it on the highway, I would definitely recommend getting a clear bra. I don't have any experience with one of those, but it's probably worth the money. Again, also, I have the still-in front splitter. I just kind of like the look of this. Um, I did use 
extra screws on the bottom so if you do get one of these buy your own screws the ones that they give you are too short to really make a good connection uh, buy your own screws and washers and add those to it um, this thing I've taken this car up to about almost 130 miles an hour um, and like I said I drive it on the highway multiple times a week and it's been fine so pretty sturdy I like the look I think it goes well with the whole um, midnight look all right let's move on to the wheels all right so the wheels pretty much what I do with these I do hit these with a um, wax and polish twice a year usually in April and October I'll use the turtle wax black box kit uh, much it's made for black wheels or black surfaces so um, the wheels could take almost about an hour to do if you kind of take your time and just you know don't rush through it I haven't had a lot of issues with these because I don't park on the street very much I did get a little bit of road rash, which was easy to clear up. You know, you kind of have some options with that. You can fill it in with a Sharpie. You can get some black paint, you know, but I covered it up in, in a couple spots and it's been fine. So just wanted to mention that. Also, this car came with Goodyear Eagle. I think it was FS1s or something like that. They actually lasted uh, 40,000 miles because I'm mostly highway. So I did get the full range out of them, but they really started getting crappy towards the end. Right now I'm running Dunlops. Uh, these are the Conquest Sport AS. They're okay. I don't really like these as much as the Yokohamas that I have right before them, but they're doing the trick. But I definitely was not trying to put the Goodyears on there because they just don't have the, the life um, that I need. And once they get around like 20,000 miles, you're like hydroplaning in a teaspoon of water. All right, let's move on to another area. Also, in case anybody is wondering, I do have 15% tent on here all the way around. I like to keep a dark look. That's just how I like it. Also, let's see, yep, you can see I did the door handles, so everything's done on this car. Um, Paint-wise, I've, I've not had any issues necessarily trying to keep it clean. I do not try and take it to a car wash. I, I only wash it in a car wash two to three times a year, and that's usually during the winter when it's just too cold to do it by hand. Otherwise, this car is clean by hand all the time. So, no issues with the paint. And also, I did upgrade the lighting in the tail section I actually have the um, red LEDs that I got from VLEDs as well I think that set was maybe about 120 140 um, definitely makes a bright difference I mean these things are like stupidly bright so okay let's move on to under the hood okay under the hood there's not a whole lot to look at I did upgrade the intake to the still in intake uh, I did that probably back in 2018 uh, so about almost two years after I bought the car. Gas mileage has been fine. What I want to tell you guys, if you're considering getting this, see if your dealership can do a retune. My dealership offered me a retune for about $130. It actually did improve the, the performance. I mean, it dropped the miles per gallon. Prior to the tune, when I was just running uh, this filter by itself, I was probably pulling an average of like 27, 28 miles per gallon. Um, if I wasn't really pushing it, I could probably stick around like 30, 31. So right now it's probably more like 25 on average with this. And if I'm behaving, I can get it back up to like 29 or 30s. But definitely I love the performance. The way it sounds is just great. I'm still running the factory battery. 111,000 miles, the battery's still going strong. And like I said, I have not had any major issues under here. I changed the oil at the dealership. They do it. It's full synthetic. So I stick to that schedule. I pretty much did all of the maintenance that the dealership recommended. So everything was done. The coolant was done whenever they re they said it. Transmission fluid. So I stuck to all of that. All right. Let's move on to the inside. All right. Some people tend to uh, wife and these sunflower seeds. So some people tend to look at these seats. Four years. I mean, the seats are really not that bad. They actually were holding up pretty good. I don't really see a whole lot of wear like you see in some of the. Uh, Acuras and some of the vehicles I've even owned in the past. These are still the factory floor mats. These things are still in pretty good shape. So they did a good job with the floor mats. Um, I need a vacuum in here, but don't mind that. All right, let's jump uh, and look at some of the other stuff on the dash. Hey guys, uh, so one thing I forgot to mention is the air filter. Normally, most makers will put the air filter, the cabin air filter behind the glove box and it's kind of easy to get to. Oh, no, 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 not in this car. They put it behind this panel. It's hard as hell to get in or out. So I'm just going to let you know right now. Um, it is not an easy job to do. You know, just trying to get 
down there like I don't know I just haven't found an easy way to do it but I just wanted to warn anybody that is like DIY that is it's it's a tough job the first time the first two times you have to do it until you kind of get used to it um, but it is definitely behind that panel it's like straight up and down the actual opening is smaller than the filter so you have to do a lot of folding and then flexing it pulling it out you're pretty much destroying it trying to remove it so um, once you get it in there, hopefully you get it in there right because if you got to take it out, you're probably going to ruin it. So I just wanted to put that warning out there. Okay, so pretty much, I don't know, you guys have probably seen the thousand reviews of this car and the interior. Um, pretty much, I really like this that the interior of this car. It does feel like it hugs you. The seats, I would say, for long drives, which I've not really taken a lot of long drives, are kind of probably uncomfortable for some, but figuring I drive every day to you know most of the days of work and I'm doing 120 miles a day I'm kind of used to it so I'm okay with that the interior is held up pretty well you know I haven't had any issues in here every now and then I get some rattling because I do listen to my music kind of loud and I get some rattles here and there nothing crazy that I can't deal with you know it is what it is I probably can open it up and put some sound proofing in there but I just haven't gotten around to doing that but otherwise the cabin is really comfortable it does have some sound dampening uh Thing, something up in the ceiling I think there's one there and there's another one behind me um, so there, it's definitely a pretty quiet cabin even with the the intake I'm considering getting the still in exhaust uh, the rear portion of the exhaust that may be to my next mod but um, otherwise uh, everything's held up pretty good in here sorry I got my mask and stuff all over the place so it's it's a pretty solid car guys I think you'll feel pretty good making this purchase I do plan on keeping this car and paint it off this will be the first car that I actually do that because I'm just that happy with it. The car drives exactly like it did when I bought it. I did get the 100,000 mile service, which they changed the plugs and, and all that. And uh, over time, I didn't realize like how much performance I was losing because you know it, the car was just that great. Um, but once I got that tune at 100,000 miles, it was just great. I definitely recommend this car. If you guys are considering this vehicle, it is definitely worth it. I think, you know, as if you can get most of the vehicle history and that kind of stuff, then you'll probably be in good shape. Uh, but otherwise, I, I, I feel pretty good about this car. I tell people all the time, I, I feel like this is probably one of the best Maximas that Nissan has turned out overall. It, it has a lot of features that previous ones didn't have uh, standard. This one has the remote start, LED headlights, uh, the LED running lights in the back. I mean, it, it just has a lot of things to it. So if you're in the market for this car, I definitely recommend it. I think you'll be happy with any of the levels. This is the SR with the midnight kit, um, just to kind of go over that again. So I guess if you have any questions, uh, drop me a comment down below and I'll try and respond. But uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, good luck in your car hunts.